All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing our first Q and A video leading up to the third episode for The Walking Dead season ten. In this one, we'll give our thoughts first on the Whispers and whether or not we think they're the best villains of The Walking Dead yet. All right, so still going through your guys' sort of comments after last night's new episode for The Walking Dead Season 10, which is episode uh, two, We Are the End of the World, the Whispers Spotlight episode, which is really the first, I want to say, Whisper All episode. You know, it's a, I wouldn't say it's a bottle episode, but it's, it's a Whisper Focus episode where you don't have anybody else in the episode except for the whispers it's really a nice spotlight episode for them and uh you know most people like the episode from what i'm seeing there's some people who kind of were sort of like ah oh, it sucks because maybe they they're not the biggest whispers fans or uh it was a pretty dark episode at some moments and a little bit bleak at times so for some people you know they might not like that type of uh, storytelling or that type of kind of concept so for them, maybe they didn't like the episode yet. But I thought we would start by giving our thoughts on the Whispers in the TV series version and how they compare to some of the other villains we've seen so far throughout the series. So whether or not they're the best villains yet. Um, I think that they are a candidate for some of the best villains we've ever seen in the Walking Dead television series. They did uh, kill more um, survivors you know, early on in their introduction than any other group in the history of the Walking Dead TV series ever has. If you think about it, in their first season coming in, they killed off Jesus almost right away, and then later on with the Pike scene, they killed off, what is it, a dozen or so, uh, Tara, Enid, some pretty big names there, Henry, who we all thought was kind of the Carl 2.0. So they have killed off, I want to say, more prominent uh, characters, more prominent survivors early on in their introduction than anybody ever has. Like even when Negan first comes in, you know, he kills Abraham and he kills Glenn, uh, which was a huge one. But really, if you think about the Whispers coming in, they've killed off way more than just that. You know, they've killed off a lot of survivors and we're not even all the way through the Whisper story arc yet. We're only kind of getting kind of getting our feet wet, kind of getting going. They've sort of been in the series for not even a full year yet because they came in close to the uh, mid-season uh, finale for The Walking Dead Season 9. They were in that half, and now they're in this half, first half of uh, The Walking Dead Season 10. So they're getting close to a full year in the series now, and it really feels like their storyline is in some ways just getting started, or at least we're gonna, we've got a lot more to see from them uh, you know, coming forward here in season 10. And we'll see if they're somehow still around in some capacity uh, after the end of season 10. I kind of think that they will be, or just maybe a splinter group as part of them, as we see sort of a back and forth type of scenario here in what is likely going to be sort of a uh, sparse or separated up version of the television series version of The Whisperer War. So I would say that I do like the Whispers as villains so far. Beta, in particular, is probably my favorite Whisperer. Uh, I do like Alpha as, as well, too. It's just kind of like a hardcore, really scary villain uh, type. She's uh, probably most similar to the governor of all the different Walking Dead villains we've had. She certainly is far different from Negan and sort of the way he was and the way he did things. She's quite a bit different from Terminus and the cannibals and the way that they had done stuff, uh, even though they were very dark as well, too. Um, probably most similar to the uh, to the governor and what we saw there at Woodbury, but definitely a refreshing new take on villains that have a different, interesting kind of uh, psychology, interesting type of philosophy that of how to survive in the world of the dead this many years into it uh, that we really have never seen anything like before. So they are some of the darkest villains of the series. Maybe they are the darkest villains of the series. If you look at the Pike scene at the end and what they did there, maybe we could say that they are. Um, they've really lost a lot of their humanity. They're sort of like uh, animals in, in a lot of ways. They even refer to themselves as the pack and stuff like this. So they're quite a bit different in that way. And I do think that they are some of the best villains The Walking Dead has ever seen uh, as a group right up there with the governor in Woodbury, uh, with the saviors and, uh, and Negan. And I'd say probably my favorite uh, villain personally for me will probably always be Negan for The Walking Dead TV series. But I realize that I am in the minority and, and a lot of people don't even like Negan at all. They hate Negan and the Saviors. Um, you know, a lot of people love the governor. A lot of people love Shane. I think Shane was voted as the most popular villain in uh, all of The Walking Dead. Um, so I don't know if that's different now, but uh, certainly uh, I guess I could say that in a lot of ways, 
uh, Alpha is quite a bit more fearsome than, than Shane was. Uh, so uh, very cool stuff for them, and uh, I am enjoying seeing what they're doing with the Whispers. It's just that they are pretty dark, and we'll go over some comments here about the darkness and uh, about getting to see kind of an all-focus Whisper episode like that because they are a pretty dark group. Mr. No Love here says, I thought it was a good episode, uh, but I'm willing to say this, and I'm sure I won't agree, or people, others won't agree, but the actress that plays Alpha can't act. She overemphasized every damn line. I mean, she could say... <laughs> It gets into some stuff here. I'll leave it in the comments if you want to see it. But he doesn't like her her acting her over the top. I think she's good because I think that as kind of a top uh, a leader of the group, she has to be a bit over the top. She has to be a bit vicious. She has to be a bit dramatic and a bit kind of vicious like that and kind of um, uh, forceful like that with the way she speaks and the way she does things. Uh, it fits, for me, I think it fits with the character. If she was just some random survivor or something, it wouldn't work. But to see her kind of like, you know, really embrace that role, really get into it and kind of act that way like that. Um, I, you're right, I don't agree with you, Mr. No Love. I, I kind of hear what you're saying, especially with the accent and stuff like that. But at the same time, um, she's she's probably what she should be or what she needs to be in order to be this fearsome leader of this uh, very fearsome group. She has to be a bit over the top. Uh, Afroform says, uh, it's weird to hear you complaining about how it was too dark. Really weird. You're a Walking Dead fanatic. You want dark, especially for the best villains we've ever had backstory. Uh, so I'm not really complaining that I'm not saying like I would rather not be so dark in the episode like episode two. Uh, what I'm more saying is that, you know, there are times of the series like the season seven premiere where people uh, kind of complain that it's too brutal or it's too dark or this kind of stuff. Uh, the Whispers are some of the darkest villains we've ever seen in the show. Maybe the darkest, probably the darkest. Um, with the second maybe being Terminus and the Cannibals, because that's a pretty dark concept too. But the Whispers, for some way, kind of feel darker for me than even the uh, than even the Hunters were with Terminus. Um, so, you know, as such, I'm not really complaining to say it was it was too dark. What I'm kind of more saying is that it's it's fitting to what it probably should be. Although, you know, for some people, it might be a bit much. For me, I mean, I can, I can stomach it. I can handle it personally. Uh, sometimes I do look away, though, at certain scenes because uh, I don't want to see certain stuff. But uh, you're probably right to a degree that you kind of want it to be, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. You want it to be a little bit dark to that degree. But there was also the part with the razor wire last season and stuff like that that they did that was very dark, too. And Alpha just all around is very brutal and very uh, psychopathic. So it's... Uh, it is, it is very dark to see, but she's also, as she's so vicious and so savage, she's also equally as fearsome and scary. So as a result, it's sort of, it, it definitely works for them. It's just that the episode by itself might turn off some viewers because of how it embraces the darkness so much. Kyle Walsh says, uh, Trev, the woman being eaten alive at the beginning is easily the goriest thing they've done on the show in a while. It was awesome. Zombie rips her nose off, breaks her jaw. Uh, I saw it and I had to turn away. It was so gross. Me, me too, to a degree, which is good, right? Um, they're really getting back to the horror roots. What are your thoughts on this? So, um, you know, you guys are absolutely right that, it, that that's pretty much how it, you know, being authentic to a zombie apocalypse, that's how it should be. It certainly made the walkers look scarier than they've looked in a while. And maybe part of it is just that, you know, after watching Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 and kind of the way we saw things being sort of like a lighter kind of style, it's uh, maybe it's a contrast to go from uh, Walking Dead Season 9, which ended off with its second last episode with like the darkest thing we've ever seen with the pikes and the faces and the zombie jaws moving and stuff. That was the darkest thing ever. Uh, and that was, for a lot of people, like too dark for them. They were like, oh my God, you got to look at this. you got to look away. So you want to see who it is, but at the same time, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's just so, it's so brutal to see. And so that's what the whispers are. Um, and to see the lady, my zombie, very brutal too. So they're kind of getting back to that, which is, um, you know, you guys are right. Like it's what it probably should be. Um, and I'm not necessarily complaining or saying, oh no, it shouldn't have been so dark. It was darker than it, sh than it needed to be. Uh, not really. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's just probably a contrast because Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 was a certain way. And so you're kind of like, if you watch it all the way through, you're kind of going back and forth. Like you're going to super dark to finish off season nine with the, the pikes and then some lightness uh, in, in fear, right? Maybe too light. And then back to the, you know, so it's kind of like the, you know, he's going back and forth. Like that meter is like, like your darkness meter is like for whispers, like, Err, and then fear comes back all the way over here. And then, <laughs> back, back and forth. It's like, oh man. 
Uh, crazy. So, um, yeah, it was gross, and sometimes it probably should be gross if you want it to be what it should be if, it, if this were real. And so it would be uncomfortable to see. And it makes sense why uh, Lydia screams at that moment, because we're watching it and we're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Imagine being there if this were real. You know, you're a little kid. You'd be, you'd be screaming, too. It makes sense, right? Leanne Gash says, I really love tonight's episode. The dark and scary stuff has been missing. And I feel like we are getting back uh, to how it used to be when it first started. I had to cover my eyes a few times, uh, but at least it's not as dark as the whispers were in the comics. I'm glad they left uh, or they leave that stuff. Well, you know, that's that's kind of tricky to say. Um, are they darker in the TV series or the comics? I don't know. I mean, certainly the way the Pike scene looked at uh, near the finale there, and it was like that was a traumatic thing to look at. <laughs> so you see Tara's face. It's kind of like the job and stuff. That is some of the scariest stuff in any series ever. I mean, it really is. Um, I mean, I don't know. I can't think of anything that's scarier than that, maybe that I've ever seen. So, um, but... That's, like we said, if you want this to be real, if you want to take it as real, then that's that's what it really would be like. So, hmm, you know, it's not like, it's not, we're not saying it's, what we're saying is it's not broken. It's super dark. So we're noticing that for viewers, but we're also accepting and saying that if it probably should be, if, if you want it to fit in with, with how it really, with how it really would feel, that's how it would feel, right? If you were there. So, um yeah, I mean it's not it's not broken. <laughs> that's that's how it should be. It's just for some people, I can pretty much guarantee you it will be a little bit off putting to them. Uh, MK Psyop says a great episode, polar opposite of Fear of the Walking Dead. Loving it, right? So <laughs> that's true. Uh, you know, again, like I said, that's you know it's it is very different from kind of fear being so light. Um, you know, personally for me, I like it sort of like with a lean towards dark but maybe a little bit maybe not so dark but something but if sometimes you got to go there then then do it you know the season seven premiere was there really really dark like that and it worked really well i thought there were some people who complained about it but it's like well if you know if you don't like it then you know it's a zombie apocalypse what do you expect you expect uh, rainbows and and uh, uh, uh flying uh, hot air balloon beer bottles and stuff like this like, <laughs> like what do you want if you want that go watch fear you'll like that better uh robert taylor says the picture is a beta and his friend, so they confirmed that it's uh, that it's his friend on Talking Dead, I guess. So that's cool. I haven't watched yet because I'm making the videos uh, while it's been on. Um, had their faces scratched out. With that being said, Beta was wearing a cowboy hat, like in the vinyl record. So it sounds like Beta probably is a country singer of some kind or a metal singer or something, which is kind of funny. Uh, and they and he was kind of singing with with Alpha there too about being the end of the world and stuff. So it sounds like in the TV series version, they're going to make uh, Beta some kind of famous. Uh, country singer or something like this or singer so uh, that's kind of cool to see ahead of time from fear see there's an advantage for watching fear is that you get that kind of insight and if you skip fear you wouldn't get it so you sort of have to like for season six of fear it's like you kind of have to watch it because there's stuff they put in there that connects to walking dead so you kind of you don't have much of a choice you kind of want to have to you kind of have to watch it or at least hear what we're saying so that you can get the kind of the jump on stuff like that otherwise uh, you won't know until they eventually re reveal it which might be later on this year or next year that beta is was some kind of a singer before the zombie apocalypse had started, uh, a recording artist. Uh, Kyle George says, uh, still waiting on that uh, Tobin character spotlight. <laughs> so th that was another scary episode uh, last year when Tobin went, uh, was that last year? No, the year before, uh, season eight, right? Uh, when Tobin sort of got infected and then the infected weapon stuff and then turn and everybody came out. That was another one where zombies were scary, right? So I guess zombies are sort of scarier in the original Walking Dead then they seem to be in fear. So that's just something just to notice. You know, it's like, it's just something you just notice. It's like zombies are more fearsome in the original Walking Dead. They are in fear. The problem is they're the same universe, so they should be they should be the same in both if you really think about it. Because if, if this is one place, like this is uh, Virginia or this is uh, Washington or wherever close by, um, you know, and that's Texas, if it's in the same universe... It should be the same. It should not be to where in Texas it's, you know, kind of whatever, and then here it's like serious. You know, it's like, no, it should be the same both places. Uh, Jan Step says, uh, Gamma's sister uh, just wanted her baby back. Feel bad for her. So that's very true, man. And how uh, she attacks Beta later on like that. And <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, uh, oh, goodness. Well, you know, there's another dark part. If the Whispers are willing to leave babies behind to be eaten by the dead, then that's, there's another good example of how dark they can be sometimes. Tony uh, Matterson says, really enjoyed this episode. Ryan Hurst is doing a great job as Beta. For me, 
He's the standout. I mean, I, I think Samantha Morton has done an amazing job as uh, as Alpha too. But even in the comic version, I always liked Beta. I thought he was one of the one of the coolest Walking Dead characters there's ever been. Uh, he's just a monster, fearsome monster, uh, physically in the sense of the physicality of him. Physiologically, he's a monster, and so uh, to see him in that type of role, I just think Beta's super cool. And uh, you know, I love the fight with him and Daryl last year. That was amazing. Uh, one of the coolest things we've ever seen in Walking Dead. It really was. So uh, I'm a huge fan of Beta. Probably a bigger fan of Beta than I am of Alpha. I don't really like Alpha, right? I, you know, she's a great villain, everything like that. You respect her. You see her as it is. She has, for me, zero charisma. She has no charisma. She embraces the darkness. She is what she is. She's somebody you can be afraid of, but she is not somebody who you would want to follow. She's somebody that you would follow out of necessity and out of fear, which is uh, kind of a dark, again, very dark to go along with everything else in terms of motivations for the whispers and what they have. Um, you know, so it's just kind of the way it is. Giuseppe DeRosa says, uh, Q&A, do you think the whisper war uh, can end in the mid-season finale? So I don't think so. No, I don't think the whispers are going to be this type of villain uh, that we just see one war with them and by the mid-season finale, the whispers are done for for good. Uh, I don't think that's how things are going to go. I think we might see some twists here. We might see some cool stuff. And we might see the survivors sort of beat the whispers back. But then we might see something later on where the whispers uh, do bring in that mega herd. Uh, maybe that. Or maybe they kind of come and go. And they sort of travel around. So you see them for a while. Maybe they're gone for half a season. And then the next year they come back. Or a few episodes they're gone. Then they come back. Something like that. It's going to be sort of like that, I think. Um as we we see things go through here, I don't think it's going to be a direct you know battle war you know one after another after another. I think it'll be there'll be some breaks in in between. So that's uh, that's cool. Uh, Eric Hughes says if Lizzie was alive, she would be just like Alpha. Yeah, she'd be exactly like Alpha. You're absolutely right. Uh, and I never realized Mika, so Lizzie and Mika, and Mika being meek, right? Is the word meek? Mika. I just that just occurred to me. I never I never thought of it, right? <laughs> so that's something all these years. I just I for some reason I never I never thought about that. But it's uh, it's true. And uh, yeah, Lizzie and Alpha are like you know uh, if Lizzie was Alpha's daughter, Alpha would be ecstatic. She would be very happy. She wouldn't be so miserable. Uh, Cecil Gravel says, "Will you be doing an El Camino review?" So I started watching it just the first few minutes. And then I ran out of time. I had to go. So uh, I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to watch it this week. I'm going to do a review of El Camino with you guys. I can't wait to see it. Jesse Pinkman being back. It's awesome stuff. Love Breaking Bad. Love it. And, um, you know, I can't wait to watch that. It's just I haven't gotten time yet, and it's over two hours. I saw the runtime on Netflix and was like, okay, I'll have to watch this later. I just don't have time to watch it right now. Ethan Isgrove said, also, Beta is going to take off his mask, and underneath is going to be Morales calling it. <laughs> so nice for Ethan. That's a good one. And the last one will be from JustBed47, who says, this episode sucked. Getting tired of the same uh, always at war with some group storyline. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is, what else would you have them do? You want them to just chill out and hang around? If you look at Season 9, there was, no, there was really no war in Season 9. It's that, you know, you get friction between groups. You get stuff like this. You have different groups that have different philosophies. And so, you know, uh, battles can happen. Things can happen. And uh, I think it's just natural for what you would see. Also for storyline, I think it's interesting and fun. And I don't think you have to worry about them making it some kind of all-out war thing uh, in the TV series. I think it's going to be... I think people who are still watching right now, the people who are still into Walking Dead, are probably going to enjoy it more than they did enjoy... Uh, all Out War because for whatever reason season 7 and 8 people just really didn't like the way All Out War was translated to the TV series so I think for the Whispers and kind of the Whisper of War side of things I think people are going to like it a lot better um, maybe All Out War just went on too long or something I'm not sure or there was uh, I'm not sure or maybe it's just I don't know maybe just all around people just didn't like it because of the way it premiered so that was season season eight and things like i don't know we'll see anyway we'll see how whisper war turns out or how kind of things go with the whispers maybe i should stop calling it whisper war because it's sort of like you know just the continuation of the episodes and they're going to be battles there's going to be fights in it and it's just what it is it's set up for that now and that's what we're going to see if you guys like this video, please don't forget to thumb it up below. Be sure to leave me some comments so we can do another Q&A, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Uh, but I'll need to take probably a day or two off here to watch El Camino because that'll take a couple hours. So maybe no video tomorrow because of that. But I'll have that review for you guys pretty soon. And then eventually i got to watch Joker too. So much stuff to do, so little time. See you guys back again soon. As always, this is Trav. Say in peace.